Alright, the only other one I got was, um, in 1976. There was a Formula One race car driver named Nicky Lauda. He was involved in a title fight with James Hunt, which later got turned into a movie, which some of you out there might have seen, called Rush. Have you ever seen this movie? No. From, from, from everything I've been told, it's fairly historical, historically accurate. However, it, you know, there was some stuff, as usually happens with these things, to make it more, you know, intriguing, I guess you could say. So there was some, you know, I guess, liberties taken with the story. However, what did happen was at the 1996 German Grand Prix, at the Nürburgring, there, okay, first of all, he called a meeting, a driver's meeting, and there was a vote taken as to whether or not to proceed with the race because it was, it was, you know, wet conditions, and also, if you know anything about this track, it is like 13 and a half miles long, 180 some corners. Like there, 180 corners. Yeah, there is no way to have track workers and medical personnel in order to be able to cover the entire track. Right. So, I think uh, uh, I think the term barbaric was used in the Rush movie, as, you know, to describe to describe this racetrack. Right. Now, either way, the drivers, I guess, voted, and they, you know, went ahead went along with the race, went on with the race, and uh, a few laps in, something happened on Lado's car. It broke, smashed into a barrier, and caught on fire. So it didn't have anything to do with the track conditions. The car broke itself. The, the car broke itself, okay. yes. That, I mean, that that's what's believed, because it's the footage isn't really great from back then. Right. So it's kind of hard to really tell exactly what happened. But also, um, he was engulfed, and, and back then they also used this weird fuel that would like, it would burn like clear. So you can't see it? So you can't see it. Okay. So, and also he got trapped, you know, inside the cockpit. He couldn't get out. He was in this inferno for like 50 seconds. Or, or maybe even a little more. Right. Anyway, suffered severe, severe burns. He wound up in the hospital for what I believe uh, it was like probably about the next at least month where he went through, you know, various procedures, skin grafts. Uh, I remember hearing this, this, this thing where they had to like vacuum the burnt lung material out of his lungs by shoving this tube down in there. At least that's what happened in the movie. Right. I have to assume that something similar probably did happen. Right. Because it's just impossible to believe that you're in an inferno like that for that long, breathing in the fire. Right. And, I mean, I don't know. Sounds terrible. Yeah. Sounds very terrible. Definitely doesn't sound like I'm anything we'd volunteer yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, also they they truly believed that you know he he was he was going to pass, right? You know they they didn't think there was any way he he was going to make it, but he did make it. And forty two days after his injury, he came back and he was racing at the Italian Grand Prix in, in Monza, days. and which is also amazing because he was a Ferrari driver. So, yes, the local Italian fans were very excited, nonetheless. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't see how you recover that. I, I don't either. Oh, from, from like skin grafts and stuff? I, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not, I don't yeah. know a lot about, but I would feel like you would have, your body would have to heal longer than like a, a little over a month. Every, like I said, no one believed that he was there and no one believed that First of all, that he was even there. Right. Secondly, that he was planning on racing that weekend. 
Now, I don't know, I, I, I didn't actually look into the historical accuracy of this, but uh, in, in, in the Rush movie, anyway, uh, did not uh, have, a, have a good start. However, because uh, apparently, like I said, I, just imagining the pain of putting a helmet on with your face totally burnt. In fact, right. he was burnt so bad that his ear was basically gone. It's almost like he didn't have an ear. So, I mean, well, just, they, just imagine that. I mean, it is painful because you got nerves in your ear. Mm -hmm. But you you actually don't really need your ear either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean... Yeah. But it's still pain. Right? Yeah, well, on top of that, if it melted his ear off, imagine the rest of his face. Yeah. It, it's kind of where I'm getting right. At. right. So, if it was that hot, I mean, it had to have been, I would assume, between 800 and 1,000 degrees yeah. in that fire. So in uh, very lucky to be alive, definitely. Yeah, and then forty-two days later, comes back, and I believe he finished fourth in that race, which was That's definitely just good, yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable that that could even you know potentially happen. I mean, it also has something to say about the uh, the technology of the. Uh, the, the suits that the that drivers wear. I mean, even then, and compared to today, I watched a video. I mean, this, this I don't I don't know if you have any more to say about that situation, but um, I watched a video the other day of an IndyCar driver. I do not remember the name because I had not even planned to bring this up, um, and I don't know if he the, this guy came back to race again. But they have they built this halo thing on the front of mm -hmm. uh, Indy cars, which is it's it's actually very I cool. Think, I think they call it a windscreen. Uh, they call it a halo in the video that I was watching. Well, well, the halo is an F one thing. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe it was an F one race. Oh no, I know exactly what you're talking. You're talking about Romain Grosjean. Yes, where yeah. he he Woo! slid and he ah. went through. Yes, he went through the 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 barrier. Yes, and. The, the car was completely cut in half. Yes. And I, I when I watched the video, I was like, oh, this guy is probably dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, no, there's no and then doubt. 20 seconds later, you see him hopping out of the thing. Yeah, he's getting out of the car, and he's jumping over the, the yeah. barrier. I, and I, I, actually, I was actually watching that race when it happened. Right. I was like, ooh. So do you know if he's racing again? Yeah, well, he's in IndyCar now. This, this happened. So he is racing. This, so. this was his next to the last race. And that he was in Formula One. He was leaving Formula One anyway. Okay. But this was the next to the last race before, you know, he he was he was out. And then he come back next year and race IndyCar. Right. So. Which is amazing. But yes, that that Halo, you know, device that right. they have on Formula One cars that one hundred and twenty percent saved his life. Yeah, no doubt about that. Because the way that car got wedged in there and, and you know, the Armco barrier, the halo, you know, it, split it. Yeah, it and spread it out. And the front of the cockpit went through the other side so he was able to right. hop out, hop over the barrier and get out. Right. Yeah, no, no shot did I think and that after seeing that accident that he was going to get out of the car. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, believe me, I was watching I was like, uh oh. <laughs> and, I mean, someone... Yeah, I mean, I think someone died in Formula 2 a, a few years ago, but I don't think there has been a death in Formula 1 since, like, the 90s. So, I mean... Well, that, let's be honest, the technology that they put in it, these cars so for safety better. is so much better nowadays, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you see a lot of these actions. There's cars flying in the air, like, 20 feet, and then, then smashing back into the ground, and these guys are walking away from mm -hmm. People going through the barriers at like 120 miles an hour, splitting through the barrier, cutting their car in half, and then walking away from it. You know right. what I mean? While it's on fire. Right. While it's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I remember watching that. Like, they had to, I think they had to red flag that race for like two hours. Did they? Yeah. In order to repair the barrier. I, it might have been like an hour. Right. But either way, it was a long time. But yeah, see, seeing, seeing him hop up out of there, dude, I was like, wow. Safety's come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even with uh, Dale Earnhardt, uh, where uh, his, his accident uh, and his passing in Daytona, I think his son had a very similar 
Um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had a very similar accident. I'm not 100% sure. It might have been also at Daytona. But he went into the wall exactly like Dale Earnhardt Sr. did. And uh, he walked away from that. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I know he, he had concussions, which led to him retiring. Right. But, uh... I mean, he's still alive, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, they, you know, they, they did that. They instituted, along with the, you know, the IndyCar, the uh, mm -hmm. research on that whole safer barrier kind of thing. Right. Which, I mean, that's that's more or less for, like, oval circuits and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Not really what I pay attention a whole lot to anymore. Right. I love the Formula One, though. I don't watch any kind endurance, of racing. Endurance mm -hmm. sports cars. Great. <laughs> I don't have that type of uh, attention span nowadays. Uh, it seems like I like I'll watch something for about ten minutes, and that's all you get from me. Ten minutes. Watch the final two laps. Yeah. Good to go. Yep. Yeah. I know how it ended. That's all I needed. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, the only other thing I'll say on on the whole louder situation is that they went to you know the final race of the year and it was at Japan I believe it was raining and he completed one lap pulled his car into the pits and retired from the race and that allowed James Hunt to win his first and only world championship title so yeah. maybe maybe yeah may, maybe he just knew it wasn't worth it right or you know I mean Hey, hey, I'm sure there are a bunch of different opinions, but I don't know. I like the movie. I'd recommend it out there. Rush, if you haven't seen it yet. All right, well, there we go. This week we uh, talked about um, athletes coming back from horrific injuries, other horrific injuries, horrific sights that we have seen on television, racing accidents. Kind of an interesting week, I thought. Right. All spurred on by Tiger Woods coming back to play in the Masters. So if you found any bit of this content enjoyable, remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell button. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, of course, Gregor Guy. My name is Casey. And everyone out there, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.